Coffee's on. Help yourself at any time. You're welcome to take it back to your pew with you. But please make sure you stay and have coffee with us at the, uh, at the end of the service um, after worship, and we have some treats. Um, let us start with the land acknowledgement, which is printed in your bulletin. Your part is written in bold. Grace United Church takes seriously the commitments made to First Nations communities through the National Truth and Reconciliation Commission report, especially through the calls to action to churches like us. Therefore, we acknowledge this day that we gather for worship on the traditional territories of the original nations of this land, and we acknowledge with respect their history, their spirituality, and their culture. Um, I'd like to send out uh, special greetings this morning to everybody who is celebrating a special event this week. A uh, special happy birthday to Graham Anglin this morning. I want to thank Liz Church for leading our worship service this morning while Reverend Takui is taking a much deserved break. Reverend Takui will be back with us on the 18th of April and uh, Liz will be taking care of any ministerial duties in that time. Barb Dejeet will be here next Sunday to lead our service. Thank you for your donations and support of the Count Your Blessings Lenten calendar. To date, we've collected just over $1,000 for the Gananoque Refugee Settlement Group for Hamsey to bring his family to Canada. Hamsey was here and spoke to us a few weeks ago, and uh, he's anxious to bring the rest of his family to Canada. Donations are still welcome. You can put them in the offering plate. You can e-transfer to Lori in the office, or you can make a donation through Canada Helps through our website. A huge thank you to the pie makers who over Easter had almost $3,000 in sales. Wow. There are more pies in the freezer, and if you would like a pie for your supper tonight, speak to one of us at the back and we'll see about getting it for you, or call Lori during the week um, if you want a pie. There's a small error in this week's bulletin. Yes, tomorrow is Eclipse Day, but the church office is not closed. Lori will be here for her usual hours. A couple of dates for you to put in your calendar. One is for our music concert, The Bobby Show, um, with Michael K. Myers and Tim Hallman and some others. It will be Thursday, April the 25th, here at the church at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are $20 and are available this morning. Look for Lori at, uh, sorry, look for Vicki at the back if you would like to buy a ticket this morning. Or you can call Lori at the church office and you can do it online through our website. Okay? And St. Andrew's Church is having a spring craft fair on May the 4th. Vendors are still welcome, and there's a poster about it on the uh, information board at the back. Okay. I don't feel like a stranger. I feel like a friend when I come now. I've been in here a number of times, both leading your worship and just to sit in worship with you. And I thank you today for uh, the opportunity to share with you again. 
I noticed something in the bulletin too that reminds us how close we are as a knit, fam as a knit family because we at Portland also did some of these uh, Izzy dolls. So when I saw that picture, I thought, ooh, that's nice. They know exactly what we're talking about when we mention the Izzy dolls. So thank you for your working on that as well. Our gathering hymn, God is here as we, your people, meet to offer praise and prayer.
It's very interesting. That particular tune, Heiferdahl, is one that has been around for a long time. The words that we sang are somewhat newer. 1978, that's a little bit newer, and uh, for sure, than 1838. But uh, very interesting that how well uh, music carries through generation after generation. I was very moved by this song when I read that second verse. When we come into a worship, a place of worship, we recognize that it is not just a building. We have here the altar, the table that we come to. We have the font, the font that we use when we do baptisms. We have the cross as the central figure of why we come here to worship. And all of these things that are around us that remind us of the greatness of God. How wonderful indeed that is. Let's pray together. We come to worship you today, our Lord, with the Easter miracle still alive in our hearts. As we gather, we recognize the blessing of being together and offer you our thanks. Be pleased with our offering of worship. Amen. When I was choosing the spiritual focus today, it wasn't very difficult from this, the uh, scripture reading that you will hear in a few moments. But I, it was a reminder that I needed to give to myself and to you. If peace and harmony were easy, do you think we would need so many reminders? If peace and harmony were easy, do you think we would need so many reminders? As people who are free to worship, we acknowledge that Christ is the light of the world. And then a gathering call that we will say, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Take refuge in the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And with the spirit of a risen Savior still fresh in our minds, we sing, Rejoice, the Lord is King, your risen Lord adore. <laughs>
Now before you all sit down, take a moment, turn around, say hello, pass the peace of Christ, and each one of you, as you do that, remember, this is God's day. We are here because we love him and we love each other. Peace of Christ. I understand that in some churches they're afraid to pass the peace of Christ because they can't get control of the meeting any further. So um, I'm glad to see you are such a ruly bunch of people and uh, you've done that very nicely and greeted one another in the Lord. Thank you so much. We come really to hear not only the beautiful singing that happens, but we come to hear the word of God. And no more beautiful words have been written than break now the bread of life, Savior, to me, as once you broke the loaves beside the sea. Beyond the sacred page, I seek you, Lord. My spirit waits for you, O living word. When I first learned this song, there was another word in there, and I'm not sure how many of you remember it, but it said, my spirit pants for you. It sounded so deep in what we were trying to do. It was like we could not contain the desire to be in the presence of God. My spirit waits for you. We're waiting to be blessed as we come into God's presence. Let's share this together. Wes will now come and share the word of God with us. Bear with me, I'm new to this. The scripture today, Psalm 133, the New Living Translation, a song for pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem, a psalm of David. How wonderful and pleasant it is when humankind live together in harmony. For harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head, that ran down his beard and onto the border of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has pronounced his blessing, even life everlasting. John 20, 19-31, Jesus appears to his disciples. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side, 
They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Then Jesus appeared to Thomas, one of the twelve disciples. Thomas, who was nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the lawyer. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound on my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Purpose of the book. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in his book. But there are writ they are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. May God's spirit and, under and add understanding to our hearing.
Never-ending, hallelujah. What a wonderful, wonderful song. Let us pray together. Dear creator of all, as your word was read, you spoke to us. May the words I share now be received and bring blessing, guidance, and encouragement. I give you thanks. Amen. Quite a few years ago, there was a song that was written, Let There Be Peace on Earth and Let It Begin With Me. This really encapsulates, encapsulates the scripture of Psalm 133 that we heard read. How wonderful and pleasant it is when humankind live together in harmony. And yet, this would appear to be just the opposite of how it is. We say we want peace, but the political powers that be are weaponizing many parts of the world. News story after news story report the chaos that is all around us. Kids in school feel desperate. Teachers are tasked with the impossible. Parents have lost control. Scripture tells us that Christ is the Prince of Peace. And we crucified him. I am bringing all this to your attention, not to depress you but so that you remain aware of our position in this world. We cannot remain as Sunday go-to-meeting Christians. Can we really expect that world peace could happen even when we try so hard to bring it about? So what exactly am I saying when we talk about peace? And what are we singing about when we sing about peace? Or when we preach about peace? Romans 3 and 17 says this, the way of peace they have not known. Point blank. It reminds us that from the beginning of creation, when we were given a choice, we chose selfishly. James 4 also tells us, what starts wars and fights among you is it not because you want many things and are fighting to have them? You want something you do not have, so you kill? You want something you cannot get, so you fight for it? You do not get things because you do not ask for them? Or if you do ask, you do not receive because your reasons for asking are wrong. You want these things only to please yourself. Scripture continues because we have read it many times when we've read the Beatitudes from Matthew chapter 5 and especially on verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Therefore, we are called to be peacemakers. God wants us to follow him and enjoy the benefits of peace. While you may think I am saying it is futile work for peace, it is the exact opposite I want to convey. So I ask these questions. What do we need to learn to have peace? We will start today with obey God's law of love. It is the law of love that makes our relationships prosper and meaningful. Have you considered yourself as a peacemaker? You don't just think about it, you act it, you live it out. 
Over and over, scripture points this out to us. The truth of Matthew 5, Matthew 22, Psalm 19, and again in Romans chapter 12. And this is what that says. Live in peace with each other. Do not act or think with pride. Be happy to be with poor people. Keep yourself from thinking you are so wise. When someone does something bad to you, do not pay them back with something bad. Try to do what you know is right and good. As much as you can, live in peace with everyone. Christian brothers and sisters, never pay back someone for the bad they have done to you. Let the anger of God take care of the other person. The holy writings say, I will pay back to them what they should get, says the Lord. If the one who hates you is hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them water. If you do that, you will be making them more ashamed of themselves. Do not let sin have power over you. Let good have power over sin. Striving to live in harmony. Not allowing pride to stir up conflicts. Leaving revenge to God. Serving our enemies. These are challenging assignments, but they are essential to the way of peace. So firstly, obey God's law of love. Second really is something that we understand. Study God's wisdom. Earlier in James from chapter 3, uh, verses 17 to 18, from the New Life Version, and this is what it said. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. Then it gives peace. It is gentle and willing to obey. It is full of loving kindness and of doing good. It has no doubts and does not pretend to be something it is not. Those who plant seeds of peace will gather what is right and good. William Barclay, in his daily study Bible commentary, says this. Let us remember that peace means right relationships between each other. So then, what James is saying is this. We are all trying to reap the harvest, which, is a, good, which a good life brings. But the seeds which bring the rich harvest can never flourish in any atmosphere other than the one of right relationships between each other. And the only people who can sow these seeds and reap the rewards are those whose life work has been to produce such right relationships. This is to say, nothing good can ever grow in an atmosphere where people are at variance with one another. A group that where there is bitterness and strife is barren soil in which the seeds of righteousness can never grow and out of which no reward can ever come. That is not where we want to be. Isaiah 32 beautifully connects righteousness and peace. The work of the righteous will bring peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. So firstly, we obey God's law of love. Second, we take out the word that he has given us and study it so that we find wisdom on how we live each day. And thirdly, grow in godly love. I come back to my opening words, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And ask, where do I find my answer? Where do I find my answer? Do you remember 1 Corinthians 13 and how often we refer to it as the love chapter? If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. 
So no matter what I say, what I believe, what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. What a tall order. Christian love never becomes exasperated with people, never stores up memories of wrong committed to you. There was someone else besides scripture when we read that from 1 Corinthians, and perhaps it is one that we often have referred to in our lifetime. And it's by, the po uh, by a poem by Rudyard Kipling, and most of us will know it, the poem, If. Allow me just to repeat the first verse, because it's kind of saying the exact same thing as 1 Corinthians. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired of waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If we went on to read that, we would recognize that this poem, for many here, we see the value of it carried through our lives. We've made reference to it perhaps many times, not realizing how closely aligned it was to the scripture of 1 Corinthians 13. Anger, greed, revenge lie behind so many of the fights and the wars going on in the world today. Understanding the biblical principles will help us as we live out our lives. So first, we obey God's laws of love. Second, we study God's wisdom. Third, grow in godly love. And then we end with pursue the mind of Christ. In Voices United, number 701, we have a beautiful hymn that says, goes like this. But it comes directly from Micah, chapter 6 and verse 8. What does the Lord require of you? To seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your God. Very simple. It is a mantra that we have had for many, many years in our lives. In fact, from the time we became a Christian, most of us have wanted to do that. Not always knowing how, but always to want to do that. Seek justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. And Paul states it just as clearly to the church in Philippi from the New Life Version when he says, nothing should be done because of pride or thinking about yourself. Think of other people as more important than yourself. Do not always be thinking about your own plans. Be happy to know what other people are doing. Think as Jesus Christ thought. And this is how we grow. We need the mind of Christ. Think of others, a willingness to sacrifice, and to live humbly. Seek to understand others. When Christ returns, the world of peace, peace will be glorious. Until that time, follow God's way of peace. Trust him, believe in him, and reach out 
that others will be part of this glorious kingdom of true peace. May it be so. Amen. Let us pray together. At this moment, Lord, we come continuing to sit in your presence. We have lots to think about. We have so many words that we want to say. We have so many things that need to be done. But we want to do them all to your honor and to your glory. For some who are bowed in your presence at this moment, Lord, there may be a sense of hopelessness. There may be a sense of being lost or alone. Sadness. Sickness. And Lord, when we feel bereft, we forget. We forget that there are those around us that you have given us to comfort us. We forget that you have sent the Holy Spirit to us to just enwrap us in his love and to guide us. And sometimes, God, we even forget that you have given your own son that we might have life eternal. Lord, as we pray these prayers of hope, we recognize that it, it is a day-to-day -day struggle for some of us. But we want to do your will. And we ask, Lord, that with that in mind, you would always help us to walk on the path of life that leads to you. For those that are here, Lord, at this moment, who have family members, that are not serving you, family members who are far away from you, we would ask that something that we say to them this week would lead them closer to you. For those who are sick, oh God, lay your healing hand upon them. And whether it be healing from the diseases or whether it be healing, Lord, that they might reach out to you and accept their walk in life, but living close to you, that they would know your love and comfort. All of these things, Lord, we ask that that may be so. Lord, we want to say to you today that we are so thankful. We are so thankful for all that you have given to us. And Lord, as we walk, let us walk, Lord, knowing that you are right here beside us, that you cover us, that you protect us, that you lead us. And Lord, we want to say to you, in honor of who you are, the precious prayer that you have taught each of us as we grow closer to you, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Your generosity matters. Me again. On a windy, windy weekday morning in February, you might expect a camp to be quiet anxiously awaiting the hustle and bustle that summertime will bring. But on the escarpment in Lincoln, Ontario, Cave Springs Camp is anything but quiet. 
A nature school for youth operates daily on the lower floor of the new conference center. Staff take bookings for weddings, corporate events and birthdays, and in the afternoon, a youth group will arrive to enjoy the year-round facilities. Cave Springs Camp hasn't always been this way. Not long ago, programming would only run in the summertime, with some bookings into the fall if weather permitted. Program director Lance Wright enthusiastically expresses his deep gratitude for the people who have made year-round facilities and programs possible. Looking outside on a February weekday, Lance can see children at the nature school experimenting with the wind instead of hiding from it indoors on a phone or computer. Lance's passion for creating lifelong memories and inspiring faith and self-confidence shines through his work to build a caring and dynamic community atmosphere. From the vibrant colors of spring to the warm sunshine of summer, the crisp air of fall, and the magical snow-covered landscapes of winter, Cave Springs Camp provides an ever-changing backdrop for people of all ages to appreciate outdoor activities and adventure. Your generosity through mission and service is helping children, teens, adults to reconnect with nature at any time of the year. Thank you. Down the road, there will be a video from Cave Springs Camp coming uh, to show you a bit more information. Thank you, Wes. We will now receive this morning's offering.
How beautiful it is that we can come into God's presence in this way. And so we say, all the way my Savior leads me, it's a closing hymn. Can I doubt his tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. of you, I would pass on Reverend Takui's thoughts and prayers. Uh, she is, they're just up in the Collingwood area having a few days, her and Gary. Um, Gary is still uh, slowly recuperating, has not really uh, had, he's had some good days and some bad days, just so you know, to keep them in your prayers. And uh, they have enjoyed these few days away. And for each of us, as we think about them, Remember that we, as God's servants, we, as God's ministers, minister to each other and to those around us. This doesn't stop here today. This means you have to go out, you have to go out and speak to others and give them a word of cheer, allow them to know that you, as a, a servant of Christ, want them to end up in heaven with you. And so whatever you can do to pass on God's word of peace and love, do it. Be the salt of the earth and send out his radiant light. May the blessing of God go before you. May grace and peace abound. Be guided by the spirit and spread God's love to the world. As you go, walk in the light of God. Know God's presence in your life. And may the spirit of God keep you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.